I'm Shamara Fletcher and I'm going to be sharing a short reflection with you on my thoughts and observations about the church in one of the most challenging times in our era and I also want to premise this talk with saying I think today's theme is absolutely fantastic. I think a church on the edge is timely for the times that we find ourselves in. So do feel free to get a notepad and pen. I've got some questions for you at the end of this reflection and it'd be great to dialogue with you this afternoon. Now, being a church on the edge can be very daunting, uncomfortable and fiercely enters us into the territory of the unknown, especially when we look at the transition out of this pandemic as the role of the church in public life, you know, may be questioned, perhaps even looked at with suspicion. And as we technologically advance into areas and development such as artificial intelligence, which can really advance humanity, but equally can dehumanize, I think to note the topic of a church on the edge is very possible and real, even through this pandemic that everybody has been feeling on the edge. And I even saw on the comments, even feeling over the top. So it has been a trying and challenging time. I do want to encourage you this afternoon that being at the edge is actually one of the most exciting transformative spaces and is where real change, reform, revival, dynamism and vibrancy takes place. Now, as I was reflecting on this topic, and I've got a short time, when we look throughout the Bible and church history, it's really at the edge that God shows up. For instance, Jesus lived out his ministry on the edge with those he even chose for his disciples, the types of people that he hung out with and ministered to, including the socially rejected, such as tax collectors, homeless people, prostitutes, those who were really considered the least of these in society. We often find in the text that Jesus is often around these individuals. And not only that, he transforms these social rejects to become leaders and commissioners of spreading the good news of the gospel. So I do wonder as the 21st century church, are we being invited to actually go back to the edge? Yes, whilst these times are pushing us there, is this an opportunity to be a space of prophetic resistance? Now, different traditions might label that differently, but what I mean by that is being a space to speak truth to power, a space to speak truth to what's happening in our society, and a space that invites those who are socially rejected to be those who spread a good message, even if it's one that is unpopular. So in this short reflection, I want to share two things that I want to leave with you today of where I think the Church of the Edge is, um, a church that is fiercely committed to the cause, but graciously open to the methods that gives opportunity for real change. And today I want to speak about the development of unlikely leaders and then championing rest as resistance. Now, out of my typologies of unlikely leaders, I want to focus today on the powerless unlikely leaders. And these are unlikely leaders who experience powerlessness in multiple ways in their daily lives. Um, and I argue that they are not only a gift to our church and to our mission, but they can actually spiritually and culturally revive and transform our institutions. Now, this might include individuals who have overcome trauma, addiction, former homeless people. I see my good friend Ian um, on the talk today. We do a lot of work in this area. Those who might be experiencing poor working conditions and wages and often have less agency in their everyday life. Now, oftentimes these unlikely leaders are seen as those that the church helps, um, and this is appropriate at times, but that's not actually the sole purpose of our interaction. You know, intentionally building relationships with these types of unlikely leaders is transformational because unlikely leaders aren't just there to be benefic beneficiaries or for us to give gifts or feel sorry for them, but actually their identity is more than their vulnerability and it should be reciprocal because we have a lot to learn about their spirituality, particularly homeless Christians, as we navigate this trying time. So a church at the edge 
are those that will take the development of unlikely leaders seriously, just like Jesus did. You know, if we look at Luke um, chapter five, it really homes in on this point about the unlikely leaders, those who might be overlooked. You know, even who Jesus chooses as the first disciple, Peter, it's interesting that this is Jesus' first um, choice for his top team, his cabinet, you know, is a fisherman. Growing up in a temple, he would have been exposed, surrounded by rabbis, leaders, the cultural elite of his day. Yet he chooses a fisherman to join his team and it's his first choice. I think this is something that can really teach the 21st century church who we are looking for in our leadership development, particularly as we move into this new era. And just to know, I can't imagine that Peter would have looked or smelt the part yet he was still chosen. And as I go into my second point, a church at the edge needs to take rest and Sabbath as a necessity and not a luxury. Now, what do I mean by this? During one of the most challenging times in our modern era, and um, the Christian landscape, I believe, has risen to the challenge. Across the nations, pastors, priests, clergy, laity, Christian-led organizations and charities, politicians, staff, everyone that's contributing to civic life have tirelessly and often silently worked together to help bring stability to some of the most vulnerable in our community and our community as a whole. Now, this often selfless output um, has really prompted me today in this reflection, not only to celebrate the formidable commitment of our nation, but more importantly, to remind everybody that to sustain a ministry on the edge in a context of rapid change, deep lament, sorrow and loss, fast moving technology and innovation, political polarity, especially what's been compounded by devices populism that's happening across Europe, that you need to focus on sustaining yourself so that you can sustain others. Now, you might say to those who are listening to me today, well, focusing on ourselves and might go against our Christian values, you know, to be selfless is a mark of Christian humility. Um, and we're not trying to promote selfishness. I'm not trying to do that at all. Um, and I would agree with you to an extent, but I really do want to highlight this point today. Because if God wants to use us, particularly in this nation where there is so much loss at the moment, we need to have the energy <laughs> to do it. Now, this might seem um, glaringly obvious, and I'm not trying to patronize anybody on this call today, but I just really find it interesting that one of Jesus' departing encouragements and words to his disciples is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And this could actually be found 13 times across the New and Old Testament. So, you know, it's very, very, very attractive um, and tempting to really go into, you know, the Christian rhetoric of care for our communities and um, do what we need to do, love others. And those are all commands and, you know, things that we should do. But Jesus really teaches us about the importance of balance and self-care so that we can effectively but more importantly willingly love our neighbor and take care of our communities and those on the edge so that it's not done from a place of burnout and I'm going to finish here what does this practically look like well it looks like contemplation meditation setting boundaries with yourself your ministries and dare i say even your congregants your communities and even sometimes your family jesus reminds us of the importance of setting boundaries in our schedules for rest spiritual devotion and renewal and we also see this um, in jesus's ministry which actually emerged out of a season of rest in the wilderness away from everything and everyone you know, Pope Francis reminds us that rest is necessary for the health of our minds and bodies and often so difficult to achieve mm -hmm. due to the many demands placed on us. But rest is also essential for our spiritual health so that we can hear God's voice and understand what he asks of us as a Christian community, particularly in this context of rapid change. So finally, um, despite our capitalist productivity driven culture, rest does not mean inaction. 
rest actually brings renewal, clarity, and adds a better quality to our action of contributing to God's activity and being a church on the edge in our communities. And for those that are involved in Christian ministry, um, rest also reminds us that we've been entrusted to be stewards and not owners of the Christian community and that the church's ultimate success doesn't depend on us but actually depends on God. So I finish there um, to remember in this time I challenge you to develop unlikely leaders and also that rest is resistance.